ready to rebuild. Hey guys, Cameron Luther, 3D6SE.com here. Today we're working on the 1964 356C La Carrera Panamericana Pink Pig race car. We're rebuilding the front and rear calipers. Starting off with the fronts here, today we're going to be using grease pressure to take out the pistons and then lube and reassemble them with new rubber. The fronts are 924 units with a single pot piston and then on 944 they went to a double so they're a Rambo caliber and then the rears are stock 3D6C Ate dual pot calipers and it uses a short wheelbase 911 dual master cylinder which I believe was only used in 67 and 68. See the real size difference between 52 Cadillac and a 356. So one thing you want to be careful with when rebuilding calipers, whether you're using air, hydraulic, or grease pressure, is you know, get something that can go right in here so that you don't end up shooting the piston out and it cracking on the other side of the caliper, or you don't end it up shooting it out towards your face. Um, but you also want to be careful so that piece of wood there, you don't want chips off of this going into the cylinder of the caliper as you could get scores. We've now got the piston almost all the way out. So we've got to remove our wood. But at this stage, it should go with a little less pressure as <clears throat> when it meets the end of the piston, it should usually just kind of fall flat onto the ground. So you just want to cover it up, make sure you don't get any liquid flying up at you. And wear safety glasses for sure. Sometimes they're stubborn at the end, so if you take a pair of channel locks, you can get them. The key is grab the channel locks on this part of the piston, which mates with the pad, not the part that mates with the cylinder of the caliper. And we'll just come right in. Step is clean all the grease and all the dirt and everything out. Put new rubber in and reassemble. So just wiping off the piston here for the left front caliper. You can see there's some dirt uniformly around from brake fluid just sitting as this car sat for years without being raced. Um, there's a tiny bit of scoring here and there but nothing terrible. The one thing you want to look out for is pits that you could feel, but um, for the most part, it'll clean up really well. None of this is very deep at all, so it's not of much concern. And once we finish cleaning out this and get the rest of the rubber dust cover off of it, then we'll get in the cylinder itself. One important thing is to keep your area that you're working in really clean because Pieces of debris can easily get stuck into here, and especially when you replace this seal, which holds all the pressure of your braking. Um, you don't want to get stuff in behind the seal because then it'll put too much pressure on, and that can end up seizing the caliper. You can see all these rubber pieces, which some came off here, some here. It's all part of the same gasket, and uh, this metal ring came out of there. As you'll see later on the rear calipers for the 386Cs, they're pretty easy to get. But this is a little bit trickier because it's deeper down in the groove there. And, uh, well, it doesn't help that this is the first set of 924 calipers I've done. I normally do rears and stuff, so I'm not really used to it. Um, but you learn something new every day. And there it is. The cylinder is ready to be scotch braided with W240 as a lubricant. Started on the piston here. 
it's already cleaning up pretty nicely and I'll show you what it's like when it's done. We've got the passenger side rebuilt. As you can tell, the finishes look like they did when the caliper came off, but it has a new dust seal and a new seal on the inside of the cylinder as well. And it's ready to go back on the car. That's on, now we need the safety pins and we're ready to roll for the front end of the car. Here's the first rear caliper redone. As you can see, I tried my best not to disturb any of the finishes, but make the functionality work perfectly so that it can be used for many miles ahead before being redone once again. The passenger side is reassembled and I'm just spinning it to ensure that it spins fairly freely for a rear caliper and rotor assembly. Similar thing here with the piston, you need to be pulled out and uh, you're dealing with two on these rather than just one. What I've done here is take the bleeders and put them both on the inside of the caliper. That way it is a closed circuit and I can pop off the inside piston without uh, putting any hydraulic fluid or grease into the other side. That way both can be removed at once. Here's the old master cylinder. It functioned seemingly fine, but I just didn't want to take the risk with old seals. And I'm glad that I ended up swapping it for this new one because in one of the inlets, I found a bit of rust in the old one. So it is good to have a new clean master. It was fairly tricky to switch this master, not time consuming, but it was hard because you are swapping a master that is larger than the stock 356 one, as well as the fact that there is a 944 or 924 style steering rack inserted into this car. So there are a lot of steering arms and suspension components which get in the way of your hands. And due to this style of this master, the inlets are rubber uh, cups, which go around a metal hard line, which then goes up to the reservoirs. Well, we've got the last Ate caliper rebuilt and the 
short wheel base 911 dual master cylinder is replaced and with that short of going ahead and bleeding the brakes uh, they are done on the pink pig uh, next we're going to get into replacing fuel lines and reinstalling the weber carbs